Hi there. This is day number 48. Today we read Exodus 34 and 35, Psalm 6, and our first reading in Luke 6. Welcome back, my friend. In 1 Peter chapter 1 we read, For through the living and eternal word of God you have been born again as the children of a parent who is immortal, not mortal. It's my privilege to read to you today the living and eternal word of God. So let's open to Exodus 34. Yesterday we heard about how God's meeting with Moses was interrupted because of the people making the golden calf. And don't you hate interruptions? Aaron caved in to the people's desires. Moses interceded for the people, and God agreed not to destroy them. God eventually agreed to go with the people to the promised land. As we closed chapter 33, Moses had asked to actually see God. God will hide Moses in a cleft in a rock and allow Moses to see his back. Exodus 34 The Lord said to Moses, Cut two stone tablets like the first ones, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Get ready tomorrow morning, and come up Mount Sinai to meet me there at the top. No one is to be seen on any part of the mountain, and no sheep or cattle are to graze at the foot of the mountain." So Moses cut two more stone tablets, and early the next morning he carried them up Mount Sinai, just as the Lord had commanded. The Lord came down in a cloud, stood with him there, and pronounced his holy name, the Lord, Yahweh. The Lord then passed in front of him and called out, I, the Lord, am a God who is full of compassion and pity, who is not easily angered, and who shows great love and faithfulness. I keep my promise for thousands of generations, and forgive evil and sin, but I will not fail to punish children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation for the sins of their parents. Moses quickly bowed down to the ground and worshipped. He said, Lord, If you really are pleased with me, I ask you to go with us. The people are stubborn, but forgive our evil and our sin and accept us as your own people. The Lord said to Moses, I now make a covenant with the people of Israel. In their presence I will do great things such as have never been done anywhere on earth among any of the nations. All the people will see what great things I, the Lord, can do, because I'm going to do an awesome thing for you. Obey the laws that I am giving you today. I will drive out the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites as you advance. Do not make any treaties with the people of the country into which you are going because this could be a fatal trap for you. Instead, tear down their altars, destroy their sacred pillars, and cut down their symbols of the goddess Asherah. Do not worship any other god, because I, the Lord, tolerate no rivals. Do not make any treaties with the people of the country, because when they worship their pagan gods and sacrifice to them, They will invite you to join them, and you will be tempted to eat the food they offer to their gods. Your sons might marry these foreign women, who would lead them to be unfaithful to me and worship their pagan gods. Do not make gods of metal and worship them. Keep the festival of unleavened bread as I have commanded you. Eat unleavened bread for seven days in the month of Abib, because it was in that month that you left Egypt. Every firstborn son and firstborn male domestic animal belongs to me. 
but you are to buy back every firstborn donkey by offering a lamb in its place. If you do not buy it back, break its neck. Buy back every firstborn son. No one is to appear before me without an offering. You have six days in which to do your work, but do not work on the seventh day, not even during plowing time or harvest. Keep the harvest festival when you begin to harvest the first crop of your wheat, and keep the festival of shelters in the autumn when you gather your fruit. Three times a year all of your men must come to worship me, the Lord, the God of Israel. After I have driven out the nations before you and extended your territory, no one will try to conquer your country during the three festivals. Do not offer bread made with yeast when you sacrifice an animal to me. Do not keep until the following morning any part of the animal killed at the Passover festival. Each year bring to the house of the Lord the first grain that you harvest. Do not cook a young sheep or goat in its mother's milk. The Lord said to Moses, Write these words down, because it is on the basis of these words that I am making a covenant with you and with Israel. Moses stayed there with the Lord forty days and nights, eating and drinking nothing. He wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. When Moses went down from Mount Sinai carrying the Ten Commandments, his face was shining because he had been speaking with the Lord, but he did not know it. Aaron and all the people looked at Moses and saw that his face was shining, and they were afraid to go near him. But Moses called them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the community went to him, and Moses spoke with them. After that, all the people of Israel gathered around him, and Moses gave them all the laws that the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he covered his face with a veil. Whenever Moses went into the tent of the Lord's presence to speak to the Lord, he would take the veil off. When he came out, he would tell the people of Israel everything that he had been commanded to say, and they would see that his face was shining. Then he would put the veil back on until the next time he went to speak with the Lord. Exodus 35 Moses called together the whole community of the people of Israel and said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do. You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is to be sacred, a solemn day of rest dedicated to me, the Lord. Anyone who does any work on that day is to be put to death. Do not even light a fire in your homes on the Sabbath. Moses said to all the people of Israel, This is what the Lord has commanded. Make an offering to the Lord. Everyone who wishes to do so is to bring an offering of gold, silver, or bronze, fine linen, blue, purple, and red wool, cloth made of goat's hair, ram's skin dyed red, fine leather, acacia wood, oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet-smelling incense, carnelians and other jewels to be set in the high priest's ephod and in his breastpiece. All the skilled workers among you are to come and make everything that the Lord commanded, the tent, its covering and its outer covering, its hooks and its frames, its crossbars, its posts and its bases, the covenant box, its poles, its lid, and the curtain to screen it off, the table, its poles, and all its equipment, the bread offered to God, the lamps stand for the light and its equipment, the lamps with their oil, the altar for burning incense and its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet-smelling incense, the curtain for the entrance of the tent, the altar on which to burn offerings with its bronze grating attached, its poles and all its equipment, the wash basin and its base, 
the curtains for the enclosure, its posts and bases, the curtain for the entrance of the enclosure, the tent pegs and ropes for the tent and the enclosure, and the magnificent garments the priests are to wear when they serve in the holy place, the sacred clothes for Aaron the priest and for his sons. All the people of Israel left, and everyone who wished to do so brought an offering to the Lord for making the tent of the Lord's presence. They brought everything needed for use in worship and for making the priestly garments. All who wanted to, both men and women, brought decorative pins, earrings, rings, necklaces, and all kinds of gold jewelry, and dedicated them to the Lord. Everyone who had these fine articles brought them fine linen, blue, purple, or red wool, cloth of goat's hair, ram's skin dyed red, or fine leather. All who were able to contribute silver or gold brought their offerings to the Lord, and all who had acacia wood which could be used for any of the work brought it. All the skilled women brought fine linen thread and threads of blue, purple, and red wool which they had made. They also made thread of goat's hair. The leaders brought carnelians and other jewels to be set in the ephod and the breastpiece, and spices and oil for the lamps, for the anointing oil, and for the sweet-smelling incense. All the people of Israel who wanted to brought their offerings to the Lord for the work which he had commanded Moses to do. Moses said to the Israelites, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, the son of Uri and the grandson of Hur from the tribe of Judah. God has filled him with power and given him skill, ability, and understanding for every kind of artistic work, for planning skillful designs and working them in gold, silver, and bronze, for cutting jewels to be set, for carving wood, and for every other kind of artistic work. The Lord has given to him and to Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach, from the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach their crafts to others. He has given them skill in all kinds of work done by engravers, designers, and weavers of fine linen, blue, purple, and red wool, and other cloth. They are able to do all kinds of work and are skillful designers. We turn now to Psalm 6. This psalm is a prayer of a wronged and oppressed man crying out to God for help and rescue. God has revealed more to us than was revealed to David. We now know that people can praise God after death. Psalm 6. The Hebrew title is A Psalm by David. Lord, don't be angry and rebuke me. Don't punish me in your anger. I'm worn out, O Lord. Have pity on me, please. Give me strength. I am completely exhausted, and my whole being is deeply troubled. How long, O Lord, will you wait to help me? Come and save me, Lord. In your mercy, rescue me from death. In the world of the dead, you are not remembered. No one can praise you there. I am worn out with grief. Every night my bed is damp from my weeping. My pillow is soaked with tears. I can hardly see. My eyes are so swollen from the weeping caused by my enemies. Keep away from me, you evil people. The Lord hears my weeping. He listens to my cry for help and will answer my prayer. My enemies will know the bitter shame of defeat. In sudden confusion they will be driven away. We turn now to Luke 6. Yesterday in chapter 5, Jesus called several of his disciples after the miracle of the large catch of fish. 
He healed two men and answered a question about fasting. Luke 6 Jesus was walking through some wheat fields on a Sabbath. His disciples began to pick the heads of wheat, rub them in their hands, and eat the grain. Some Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what our law says you cannot do on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, Haven't you read what David did when he and his men were hungry? He went into the house of God, took the bread offered to God, ate it, and gave it also to his men. Yet it is against our law for anyone except the priests to eat that bread. And Jesus concluded, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, Jesus went into a synagogue and taught. A man was there whose right hand was paralyzed. Some teachers of the law and some Pharisees wanted a reason to accuse Jesus of doing wrong, So they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to the man, Stand up and come here to the front. The man got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, what does our law allow us to do on the Sabbath? To help or to harm? To save someone's life or destroy it? He looked around at them all. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand became well again. They were filled with rage and began to discuss among themselves what they could do to Jesus. At that time, Jesus went up a hill to pray and spent the whole night there praying to God. When day came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, whom he named apostles. Footnote. The word apostle means representative. And here are their names. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James son of Alphaeus, and another Simon, who was called the Patriot. Also, Judas, son of James, and Judas from the village of Carioth, who became the traitor. When Jesus had come down from the hill with the apostles, he stood on a level place with a large number of his disciples. A large crowd of people was there from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal cities of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those who were troubled by evil spirits also came and were healed. All the people tried to touch him, for power was going out from him and healing them all. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, Happy are you who are poor. The kingdom of God is yours. Happy are you who are hungry now. You will be filled. Happy are you who weep now. You will laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you, and say that you are evil because of me, the Son of Man. Be glad when that happens and dance for joy, because a great reward is kept for you in heaven, for their ancestors did the very same things to the prophets. But how terrible for you who are rich now! You have had your easy life. How terrible for you who are full now! You will go hungry. How terrible for you who laugh now! you will mourn and weep. How terrible when all people speak well of you. Their ancestors said the very same things about the false prophets. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone hits you on one cheek, 
let him hit the other one too. If someone takes your coat, let him have your shirt as well. Give to everyone who asks you for something, and when someone takes what is yours, do not ask for it back. Do for others just what you want them to do for you. Let me start us out in prayer today. Our awesome God, the eternal God. Our Father, we're thankful that David gave us this prayer, asking for you to help him, to rescue him. He had been hurt by his enemies, but he knew that you would hear his cry for help and answer his prayer. And Lord, thank you that we who follow Jesus have these promises, that when people hate us, reject us, insult us, and say that we are evil because of Jesus, the exalted Son of Man, then we're to be happy and dance for joy, because there is a great reward for us in heaven. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you brought a new covenant and that you are the Lord of the Sabbath. Lord, help us that we will be your followers in these things, that we will love our enemies and do good to those who hate us and bless those who curse us and pray for those who mistreat us. We pray, Lord, that we would do for others just what we want them to do for us. We pray that today, Lord, we would act as those who have come in contact with your living and eternal word.